NVIDIA is in trouble with the US government. Bees are in trouble with all known laws of aviation and Intel is in trouble with their customers. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, September 5th, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about the NVIDIA probe that's going on right now from the Department of Justice here in the United States. They have actively issued a subpoena against NVIDIA for them to provide documents with regards to this antitrust investigation that they're doing, which means that they're likely getting closer to filing a formal complaint, but going through the route of making sure that they're asking for the documents this time, as opposed to the French government, which just raided NVIDIA. Part of this is because there's reports that NVIDIA penalizes customers who decide to look elsewhere for AI chips, to which NVIDIA has said, nah, we're better than everybody else, which is why people buy from us, which is probably partially true. But based on uh, the many years that I've been doing this tech news channel and things like the GeForce Partner Program that cropped up back in 2018, as well as various other instigations that NVIDIA's had over the years, it's probably a little bit of both if I had to guess. Both NVIDIA is very good and people want them, but they didn't get there 100% by doing everything in a way that uh, doesn't show some sort of strength of force to their customers. So this is a pretty big update. It led to, I think, the largest sell-off in stock value ever in US history. I think it was something like $250 billion was lost from NVIDIA stock. So this will likely be a big deal moving forward and we'll keep you updated here on Hot News as it progresses. Like I'm gonna keep you updated on today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Silverstone and their Farrah 514X case. Available in black or white, this handsome mid tower case has everything you need to build a beautiful gaming PC or even a workstation. In fact, we just did that for Kyler at our new office. He's rocking the white Farrah 514X as his daily workstation now with the 360 mil Nova Peak AIO from Silverstone as well. And the 514X features a fully perforated front mesh with three included 120 millimeter addressable RGB fans on the front and one in the back. And it can accommodate up to two 360 mil radiators and graphics cards up to 394 mils in length. So a ton of the cards that are currently out of the market. And to make sure your card looks nice and level inside the Farrah 514X, there's a nifty adjustable GPU support that's included to prevent the card from sagging, which is incredibly easy to maneuver and adjust and level to Kyler's GPU out very well. A USB-C port and an ARGB fan hub are also included so that you and Kyler are up to date on the latest front IO connections and can easily set up the system to control all the fans and lighting to your exact preference. You can check out the Farrah 514X at the link in the video description in either black or white. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video and making sure Kyler has a nice little PC to work at work with. In case you want a nice little PC, we've got a new handheld company. We talked about this in yesterday's episode of Hot News that they were going to be announcing their handheld today. And now we have the Nitro 7 being unveiled from them. And while it's okay, uh, it looks a little odd. But uh, one of the things that was considered was that it might have been with Lunar Lake, especially because it was happening at IFA right after the Lunar Lake announcement. It turns out, no, it's on last gen's AMD processor. It's got the 8840HS. It has AI performance, whatever that means. Uh, cool. <laughs> That's what I want in my gaming handheld. I want to AI all the flipping things. It can go up to two terabytes of storage, but it has the 8840HS, especially with the AI HX 370s that AMD's already come out with. I, the 890M mobile GPU kind of just defeats the 780M. And so it's a little behind. It has no release date currently at the moment, it has roughly the same screen as the Legion Go, coming in at a 1080p resolution. So a little bit lower resolution and also smaller screen size, but 144 hertz variable refresh rate with 500 nits brightness it only has a 50 watt hour battery as opposed to the 80 watt hours that we're seeing on the msi claw 8 as well as in the rg ally x it seems like a mixture of the rg ally and the ally x and uh the pricing is gonna dictate it the 8840hs is not really a great chip to be putting in handhelds now we'll see if it sells well but uh i'm not sure i like the speaker looking setup on the back but what I know definitely won't sell well, because it'll likely never come out with this, is the concept dual play that they showed off at IFA as well, which includes a trackpad that transforms into your controller so that you can play your video games in case you don't need a mouse and keyboard to be able to do it. They had a hands-on concept in Germany showing this off where the touchpad can detach to become the 
controller and it also pops out the speakers somehow. Uh, this is just a concept, likely we'll never see the light of day. There's things that obviously have to be compromised on the computer, such as battery in order to make sure you have that type of space. I would love to see it, it's kind of neat. I, I would like to have a laptop with that, just like Acer also did that ultra wide laptop, the, the 21 by nine Triton or whatever it was way back in the day. Uh, they've done these weird little experimental laptops before. And so uh, it's neat to see that they can and can Reese give us the deals today. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Thursday, everyone. Hope you guys are having a good week so far, and I hope it gets even better because we have a special UFT Deals episode today sponsored by Lenovo for Intel's Gamer Days, where you can save an extra 10% off all Intel-powered Lenovo Legion gaming PCs with the code GAMERDAYS24. They graciously let me take a look through everything and choose my favorites out of the bunch. And first up, we have this Lenovo Legion Tower 5i Gen 8 variant featuring an Intel Core i7 14700F and NVIDIA RTX 47 TI Super, 32 gigs of DDR5 and a one terabyte SSD, which is currently going for $1,826.99, making it $623 or 25% off. But then onto the portable side of things, we have the Lenovo Legion 9i Gen 9 laptop, featuring a 16 inch 3.2K, 165 Hertz mini LED display, an Intel Core i9 14900HX, NVIDIA RTX 4090 laptop GPU, 32 gigs of DDR5 and a two terabyte SSD for only $3,356 dollars and 99 cents making it 903 dollars or 21 percent off but don't forget you can still save that extra 10 percent of all intel powered lenovo legion gaming pcs with the code gamerdays24 where lenovo is offering huge discounts from 22nd of august to 15th of september but hey them's the deals you can find these and more linked in the video description down below and thanks again to lenovo for letting us take a look at these but for now i'm gonna hand you off back to brett for the rest of your hot news cheers well reese over at ifa not content to let intel steal the entire show qualcomm said hey we've got Stuff too, we've got an eight core Snapdragon X Plus processor coming out that'll help us to be cheaper. It has way better battery life than the previous generation Intel stuff. We can't compare it to the current stuff that they're gonna come out with, but it's better, which Intel already showed that they're beating their old stuff anyways. And it's slightly better than whatever Apple has. But one of the things to note when you look at this eight core chip is the fact that its single core speed is pretty low, but what's also laughably low is the GPU on this is gonna be 1.7 teraflops when the X Plus and the X Elite are between 3.0 and 4.6, which already, regardless of the teraflops amount, were really bad in terms of their actual delivered performance when utilizing them in things like games or any type of acceleration. So dropping that in half is gonna be brutal. I've also heard reports, and I, I don't know if it was confirmed by Qualcomm anywhere, that this was also going to be single channel memory. Not sure if that's actually true at this moment, but it seems like in order to achieve the eight core version, they cut the GPU just to basically be meaningless. It'll just run a display driver, but they kept the 45 MPU top. So, you know, it's got that AI performance. That's right. And if you had a faulty Intel chip, you might have no performance for some time because you have to send in your CPU to be validated by Intel to actually be faulty. And then they get back to you with what they want to proceed with moving forward. And it's being reported by several people that they are getting messages that it's going to be between three to five weeks for stock to be replenished for either the 13900K or the 14900K CPU. This message from Intel's team being posted over on Reddit, I've already seen seen reports that they've said that they've had stock issues with replenishing 13900Ks, but that's always come with the caveat that they're going to upgrade to the 14900K if you're willing to do that right now. And if you want to wait, you have to wait for the 13900K. But now, according to this message, it looks like they're not even offering that at the current moment. But there was also conflicting reports in the Reddit that some people said they got that message from Intel. And then once they talked about what they wanted to do, stock just immediately became available. Anyway, Anyways, but it's not necessarily a good look that they're sending this message out that they don't have enough to replenish CPUs that people probably have been struggling with for quite some time and now have to wait even longer to get the replacement for. But there have been positive reports of Intel's RMA process. This is starting to be the some of the first negative reports that I've been seeing as of late with how Intel has been handling this whole thing. So I'm curious to see if this gets resolved, if the people who are saying that they got this actually get their CPUs faster than four to five weeks 
Lakes, which according to reports is when Arrow Lake's gonna come out, but they can't just upgrade that CPU because it won't fit into the old motherboard. So you'd be out to lunch on that. So I'm sure it's a frustrating situation for anybody who has a faulty CPU that they're struggling with right now. But Intel is just continuously in a struggling situation, not just with the 13th and 14th gen CPUs. We can ignore that because that's just base level compared to what they're really struggling with, with the money that they're losing, their lost profits, as well as all of the money that's getting sunk into their Intel Foundry services. And one of the big bets that the CEO, Pat Gelsinger, has made has been on the next generation process node of 18A or 18 Angstrom. And there have been samplings from 18A going out to various customers and reports are coming back that could be pretty devastating for Intel. Reuters confirming with three different sources that Broadcom is not satisfied with the sample chips that they got from Intel and that they don't think that Intel will be able to move to high volume production. This is despite the fact that just last week, the CEO said that they are now below 0.4 D0 defect density, which is below the 0.5 that you typically wanna see on something like a new node that's being spun up. Intel saying that everything's fine, but reports are coming out that the customers who who are actually paying for this are not necessarily satisfied with what they're gonna be getting and with how everything's been going down at Intel, they've essentially bet the entire company on these foundries working very well. And if something like 18A does not work very well, they're gonna to have to continue to produce their CPUs and GPUs over at TSMC. And then all of these billions of dollars of investments that they're putting into the foundry services are not going to actually reap the revenue that they're looking to have in order to subsidize all of the losses is that they're taking right now. This is this is a rough situation to hear that Intel is suffering from this, especially after the 60% stock price drop that they've had over the course of the year. The fact that they're allegedly gonna be considered to be dropped from the Dow Jones industrial average. And now uh, 18A, even if it doesn't have the defects, their customers are not necessarily expecting that it's gonna be up to snuff. That is, it's pretty bad. It's one thing when gamers have their CPUs being faulty. It's another thing when multi-billion dollar investments turn out to be very underwhelming. Intel's been in this position before with 10 nanometers, and it looks like this could be the start of that next chapter, even though I really hope it's not. I want, I want them to be mightily competitive moving forward. We'll see how all that plays out. And let's see how your comments played out in yesterday's episode of Hot News. Over on Floatplane, we got Scarfo saying, wait, my 4090 can draw 600 watts. So does that mean they will draw 600 watts on average? I find that unless I torture test it, I never see draw that much. So as far as I'm aware, this is gonna be the stock reference amount. So the stock 4090 is a 450 watt power draw. Can you get overclocked ones that can pull more than that? Yes, you absolutely can. Getting a 600 watt reference card from Nvidia means that basically any overclocked card, as far as I'm aware, would have to have two 16 pin power connectors in order to deliver that much power. So it's likely going to be 600 to start. And then you might even find some of the 5090s go up to seven, 750 watts having BIOSes that can be unlocked to be that high. That's going to be, it's going to be space heaters. You're going to have space heaters that you're playing video games on or running AI models. Then over on YouTube, we got Nathan saying fun fact, earthquakes have their own built-in notification system. <laughs> Somebody else already responded to that in a future comments. So I'll get to that. And then Kate McCornell saying, I never even heard of Concord. It wasn't particularly well promoted, obviously. Most of the reports that I was seeing was about how abysmally it was selling. It launched at the same time, roughly as Valve's new like hero shooter that's coming out. People didn't enjoy the game, so they didn't really talk about it. And it had a beta test that did not go very well. And so there was really no word of mouth buzz surrounding Concord that got people to enjoy it, as opposed to something like Dead Lock, Deadshot, Dead Hawk, and whatever it, Valve's uh, game is called. I cannot fully remember right now. Beta testing, uh, it seems to be going very well. People are enjoying the game. There's kind of this viral aspect to it that people want to get in. It has that exclusive key code that that's happening. So it's a, uh, yeah, Concord, uh, rough situation there. Speaking of marketing for them, um, they had a really cool limited edition controller that I unfortunately noticed too late and it was out of stock before I first saw it, but I, I absolutely love this design. The worst part about it is it's giant Concord printing on the back, but this is a very like nice retro themed space 
controller, I love it. I actually did manage to snag an Astrobot controller. So I believe that should be here today or Friday. I'm excited to get this thing and start playing Astrobot on my PlayStation. And then Rob Loxian said, IGPUs the speed of an RTX 3050 are real now. They, they sure are. I'm excited for it. And then we got somebody with no username. Haven't seen that before saying, I'm from Portugal. We had a quake last week and my Android phone alerted me before the quake. All right, that's the whole point. It's an advanced notification service because sometimes seismometers can detect it before you're actually gonna be able to feel it and you'll have at least a little bit of advanced notice to, especially in the case of a damaging earthquake, get to some sort of safe shelter for you to be able to withstand it. Hardy har har, uh, you'll know if an earthquake's happening, but also just having a little bit of heads up could potentially either save lives or uh, prevent people from uh, experiencing injury, which is a, it's a good thing, all right? Hardy har har. And I'm I'm gonna hard left turn out of here. See you tomorrow for hot news.